Starting out with weather, it looks sunny, high at 37. Winds are going to be getting up there, southwest winds, 9 to 18, gusts up to 30 plus. So we'll start out with 2701. That wolf might be paired with an uncollared. We're going to catch that wolf if we can and bring it back to Alpine. Foremost, be safe. In January and February of 2023, the Mexican Wolf Interagency field team was hard at work. Go catch some wolves. <laughs> For a couple of weeks at the start of each year, the team uses helicopters to count and capture endangered Mexican wolves. This is really important because it gives us the chance to, to finish our end of year count to get a solid minimum count on this population so that we can track recovery progress. It's been 25 years since the reintroduction of Mexican wolves to their historic range in Arizona and New Mexico. The population started at zero, but a year ago, 196 wolves were documented in the wild. Haven't hit 200 yet. We'll, we'll, see, uh, we'll see what we count this year. The counting actually began on the ground in November. So that's us going out, trying to get visuals on the wolves using tracks in the snow, our trail cameras. Counting wolves by helicopter is one last step to ensure the most accurate numbers. And it also gives us a chance to put, deploy collars so that we have collars on these wolves so that we're able to, to track reproduction, all the different management activities that go into recovering wolves. But it also the collars give us the ability to, to manage conflict and makes us that much more effective in reducing and being proactive in preventing wolf conflict. It's showing in. So. so this is a male wolf that we're evaluating. He's been darted with drugs from the helicopter. These drugs immobilize him. So he is unaware of what we're doing and he does not feel any pain. We are supporting his body systems just as we would at a veterinary clinic with fluids. We're cleaning where we darted him. We're giving him oxygen and vaccines, drawing blood, and radio collar. So he should wake up and not recall any of this, and nothing here was painful, so should do nicely. When their sedatives wear off, the captured wolves are returned to the wild. A satellite radio collar on at least one member of every pack is the key to locating and managing wolves. And yes, there is a practical reason for decorating the collars with colorful tape. Uh, ideally, we're gonna tape a collar that's gonna look a little bit different than anything else that's in the pack. We're gonna try to keep every color different for each wolf. It helps us identify them when they're on the trail cameras. I went with really bright and distinct patterns because a lot of times our photos are gonna be at night. But genetic management right now is one of the most important aspects of, of recovery of Mexican wolves. And we're doing that through cross-fostering. We're taking wolves from captivity that are brand new baby pups, placing them into wild wolf dens, and then they're being raised wild. This wolf, number 2701, is a product of that process. He's a magnificent animal. He's just huge, he's healthy. And the other thing that's really awesome about that wolf is he is the offspring of a cross-foster pup. His dad is alpha male 1471. He was born in captivity and cross-fostered into an Arizona wolf den back in 2016. Since then, he sired five litters, and at least five of his offspring have produced puppies of their own. And that's what we've been saying all along, that cross-fostering is a successful means of enhancing the genetic variability up here and maintaining the health of this population. At the end of 2022, the wild population of Mexican wolves in Arizona and New Mexico was well above 200. The year-end count documented a minimum of 241 wolves in the wild. That's a 23% increase over the previous year. There were also more packs and more breeding pairs than ever before. That's some significant momentum on the path to recovery for endangered Mexican wolves.